Hello financial fans, welcome back to another stock analysis. Today we'll be covering international business machines, stock ticker IBM. IBM is a multinational technology and consulting corporation that offers a wide range of products, services and solutions in various industries. IBM is primarily known for its computer hardware and software products, including mainframe and personal computers, servers, storage devices and cloud-based services. IBM also provides various services such as IT consulting, outsourcing and technology support. In addition, IBM has a strong presence in the field of artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, quantum computing and cybersecurity. IBM has developed AI systems like Watson which can perform tasks such as natural language processing, machine learning and data analysis. The company is currently setting at a market cap of $118.9 billion and in 2022 they generated a revenue of $60.5 billion and the dividend yield is currently sitting at 5.03%. 28% of their revenue comes from infrastructure and cloud services, 12% from cloud and data, 11% from transaction processing, 11% from consulting, 11% from application management, 9% from technology support, 8% from cognitive appliances or applications rather, 7% from hardware, 2% from operating systems, and the remaining 1% from global processing. To determine the final valuation of the company, we'll be using a margin of safety. This margin of safety will be based on the financial ratios, the financial health, and the growth of the company. I will be using a standard margin of safety of 25%, which can never go below 0%. The margin of safety can either increase or decrease based on the ratios that we're going to look at in just a moment, and the severity that the margin of safety will increase or decrease by will be determined by using a scale. Or when using four colors in a scale, bright red will mean a 5 cent increase, orange will mean no change, light green will mean a 5 cent deduction, bright green will mean a 10 percent deduction from a margin of safety. When we're using three colors, bright red will mean a 5 cent increase, orange will mean no change, and bright green will mean a 5 cent deduction. The first two metrics that we'll be looking at are the EBIT growth and the margin growth. The EBIT has gone down over the years, going from $21 billion in 2013 to $7.5 billion in 2022. The average EBIT decline is minus 7.5%, which is a 5% increase in a margin of safety. The margin during this time has also gone down, going from 21.4% to 12.5% in 2022. The average decline in margin is 3.9%, meaning another 5% increase in a margin of safety. The next two ratios are the dividend growth and the payout ratio. The dividends have gone up over the years, going from $3.80 in 2013 to $6.60 in 2022. The average dividend growth is 6.5% on average, meaning no change in the margin of safety on this metric. The payout ratio, however, is sitting at a very high 374.5% uh, payout ratio, meaning that they are spending more than their retained earnings on dividends. This gives them a 5 cent increase in the margin of safety once again, because we are not sure if this dividend can be paid in the future. They might have to cut their dividends based on this ratio. And the final two ratios that we're going to look at are the debt to EBITDA and the return on invested capital. To get a debt to EBITDA ratio, we have to take the debt of the company, subtract the cash from it and divide it by the EBITDA. Out of this, we get the amount of years of EBITDA it takes for the company to pay off all of their debt. For IBM, this is just over three and a half years, in this case, a 366% debt to EBITDA ratio, which is another 5% increase in the margin of safety. The last metric is the return on invested capital. This uh, metric will look at how effective the management is at allocating capital, and the return on invested capital ratio for IBM is sitting at 10.3%, meaning no change in the margin of safety on this metric. Not looking good so far based on these metrics for IBM. But let's go look at the valuation models next to determine the intrinsic value of the company. The first valuation model that we'll be using is the discounted cash flow model. I've imported free cash flow of IBM going from 2014 to 2022. The average growth in their free cash flow during this period was actually minus 3.5%. And for the future free cash flow, I'm expecting no growth of the next 10 years. And with this, we'll determine the future free cash flow for IBM which is going to be always sitting at $9.2 uh, $9 billion, and determine a terminal year of valuation using a perpetual growth rate of 3% and a discount rate of 8%. This gives us a sum of free cash flow of $145.2 billion. And to get an equity value, we have to add our cash and equivalent and subtract the debt, giving us an equity value of $99.9 .9 billion. All we have to do to get an intrinsic value done out of this model is to divide it by the amount of shares outstanding, giving us a discounted cash flow price per share of $111.55, which is almost a 15% downside out of this model. The second model that we'll be using is the dividend discount model. 
I've imported the dividend payouts of IBM come from 4 years ago to the current year. The growth rate in their dividends during this period was 1.26% on average. And I'm projecting no uh, growth in their future dividends at all, seeing as they have a very high payout ratio. I will once again be using a discount rate of 8% in this valuation, which gives a, us a dividend discount model price per share of $82.50, which is a 37.07% downside out of this model. The third model that we'll be using is the Graham's device valuation formula. This model will take a look at the earnings per share that IBM is generating, the growth rate estimate projected by Wall Street, and the current yield of AAA corporate bonds in relation to the average yield of AAA corporate bonds always sitting at 4.4. And we go by the theory that a company with no growth is always sitting at a PE of 7. Looking at all of these metrics, we get a fair value of this model of $82.22. And that is a 37.3% downside out of this model. The fourth model that we use is the multiple valuation. This model would take a look at similar companies to IBM, look at their stock price and their earnings per share. This way, we can determine the average PE multiple in the industry, which in this case is sitting at 27.43. All you have to do to get an intrinsic value out of this model then is to multiply by the earnings per share that IBM is generating, which is $6.09 a share. And this gives us a fair value of $167.05, which is a 27.43% upside of this model. And the last model that we'll be using is the mean inversion theory. In this model, we go by the theory that the company will all straight above or below its mean. And the metrics that we use to determine this are the dividend yield and the PE ratio. In this case, I've imported the dividend yield of the past 5 years and on average it has been sitting at 4.64%, while the current yield is sitting at 5.11%, indicating that it could be undervalued based on this metric. Doing the same for the PE ratio, the average PE ratio of the past 5 years has been sitting at 23.94, while the current PE ratio is sitting at a lower 21.53, indicating that it's once again undervalued on this metric. This gives us a fair value of this model of $145.10, which is a 10.7% upside of this model. If you want to get access to all of the models that I use in my videos, and much more, you can check in the description for my Patreon link. Anyways, getting that self-promotion out of the way, let's go look at the final overview of our valuation next. Looking at our final overview, we've imported the discounted cash flow, discounted dividend, Graham's valuation, the multiple valuation, and a mean inversion theory price per share, giving us an average of $117.68. Without a margin of safety, we would already get a downside of 10.23%. But adding a margin of safety that we've determined earlier, using a standard margin of safety of 25%, adding 5% for the debt to EBITDA, 5% for the EBIT growth, 5% for the margin growth, and 5% for the payout ratio, we get a 45% margin of safety. And applying this margin of safety, we get a fair value of $64.73. And with the current price of $131.09, we get a massive downside of 50.63%, indicating that it's currently a sell by quite a bit margin. This is all because of the high margin of safety that we've calculated earlier. If there's any other companies that you would like to see me cover on this channel, please let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching.